Hi, I'm Brian Legato, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. Today we're going to talk about some base knowledge you should know for aluminum fabrication. All right, guys, when you first come up with your fabrication of, you know, aluminum, more times than not, you're going to be using your base metal of 6061. 90% of the time, you're never going to match base material to filler material. You're going to use a different alloy. The most common alloys are 4043 or 5356. Understanding the strengths of each one will help you into your fabrications. If you have something like a tuna tower for a boat or a trailer, 5356 is a better option. There's more strength into the alloy because it's alloyed with magnesium. If you have something that's a car part, something that's gonna be in a higher heat scenario where it's in spend most of its life at an elevated temperature, 4043 is a better option. So keeping that in mind when you do your fabrications and then keep that in mind planning out your uh, weld configurations. You should try to keep aluminum into a fillet weld, lap joint, T-joint. Try to avoid butt welds as much as possible because it is weak and more times than not it will crack on that if it's under load. You suck, you can't do a butt weld. Yeah, but if you refer to D17 Aerospace, they're going to have preferred ways you weld aluminum. I, anything with aluminum, you're gonna have preferred ways to weld it. Yeah, you're gonna be tested on butt weld, but they try to engineer fillets for strength. Pow, pow. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about weld bead profile. When you're doing an aluminum bead, it should be convex, not concave. And you should also take care of your starts and stops. Your start should be nice and healthy and it should not be burnt back. If it burns back a little bit and you don't feed that puddle, more than likely it will propagate a crack, if not right away over time in service. And then at the end, the end of the bead, you should also have, you should not have a crater or a fish eye. It should be nice and convex again. This is all in an effort to keep cracking from happening. Aluminum, if treated improperly or welded improperly, can cause a crack very easily. I have four welds here we're gonna look at. They're all in the lap joint configuration. First glance, they all look good. And at first glance, most aluminum stuff will look good. Um, this first one right here, if you walked up to it, most people will think that's a good weld, how convex it is right here. And then when you turn down the side and you look down the edge, it has a stress riser right here. If this weld was put in the service, if it was on a tuna tower or a trailer or something of that effect, this one would crack very quickly. So much so that we, I exaggerated the effects right here. Uh, less filler metal on this one, even more concave, has a, has a stress riser right here on the top edge, but it's already, it's already has a crack propagating on the beginning. And I bet you if you really PT'd this end right here, you'd probably see a crack because we're, we're convex, we're burnt back, and that's a nice crater right there. This side right here, fired up, didn't, didn't feed that, uh, that rod into the puddle right away so it, it already cracked at the beginning of it these ones right here you know the, these are generically a way aluminum at least the profile should be if if you see the transition from bottom to top plate it's convex and the beginning and the ends are taken care of everything's nice and round and it's as strong as it's going to be you're stacking the deck in your favor when you have a convex transition from bottom to top or even a convex transition on a t-joint configuration i hope this helps you with your aluminium fabrications in the future um i'm brian legalio follow me on bingo welding on instagram weld mean well green